You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy 5G Network Infrastructure Summit. And I'm joined now by Patrick Donegan, who is founder and principal analyst with Harden Stance. Patrick, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Now, you're chairing a panel here at the Etsy event on 5G and network security. What is the nature of the threat landscape that we're facing today? Well, it, it's changed substantially. If you go back uh, many years to the, 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 on, the outset of, the, of 2G, for example, the big concern there was uh, people be able to, being able to break encryption. And this was you know, a, an elite of, of very, very brilliant people who might be capable of, of doing this. In today's environment, the threat actors have ch uh, metamorphosed into something completely different. Um, we have huge uh, you know, criminal gangs involved. We have small armies of people all over the world who, for very, very little money, uh, are able to access the tools necessary to carry out attacks. So in terms of the nature of the uh, adversaries themselves, we have a totally different landscape today to what we had years ago. And that's also reflected in the impacts that we see. Uh, you know, we see very, very, very substantial impacts. The attacks on the Dyne uh, networks and resources uh, at the end of last year, for example, created a, a phenomenal impact. The, um, we have a situation where, at the end of last year, uh, a, a foreign government appears to have been involved in the, uh, influencing the outcome of the election of the President of the United States. So it's not just the nature and scale of the adversaries, it's the nature and scale of the impacts that we're seeing uh, on our lives, which makes it a far more threatening environment than it's ever been before. So the landscape is changing. How are telcos faring? The telcos have actually fared relatively well. Um, telcos tend not to feature quite as prominently, but on the other hand, that's also started to change a bit as well. Talk Talk, uh, very famously or infamously, um, had a very major breach uh, 18 months ago or so, which was caused a lot of uh, interest and, and uh, action on the part of the telecom industry. And I think just as or more importantly, Deutsche Telekom was affected at the end of last year by the same array botnet that impacted the Dyne uh, resources. And when you get an operator like Deutsche Telekom, which is actually... I think by far one of the most advanced operators anywhere in the world with respect to security, when they have 900,000 of their customers brought down with their DSL routers at home, uh, I think you, know, you can see that the nature of this, the threat is escalating. So I think the telecom sector has done pretty well. Uh, one of the companies I work with, the Cyber Rescue Alliance, I, I did a, a, a mock uh, cyber attack simulation with a big operator here in Europe uh, just a few weeks ago, in fact. This company is very well drilled, um, did a lot of interesting uh, simulation work with them during the course of the day. But as a very well drilled company, you know, they still emerged from our simulation with a B. Uh, you know, still challenges in f at, the, at the time of an attack in that, those golden hours immediately upon discovery of a breach. Uh, still challenges in filtering out rumour, assumption and fact. Uh, and in that, uh, those early few hours, it's critical to be able to get that. So I think the telcos are doing fairly well, um, but uh, I think there's no room at all for complacency, none at all. Now with 5G coming, we're promised more security built in from the outset. So what exactly will change? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of aspects uh, of that. I mean, first of all, there's a tremendous amount of, going on, uh, of work going on with respect to uh, NFE security uh, being done by Etsy and others. So a lot of that uh, NFE security work is going to port its way into the 5G security landscape, and that's, a lot of that's already underway, and that's terrific. Uh, there's also some very important and particular uh, 5G security stuff that's got to be done. We're going to need uh, new quantum safe uh, uh, encryption algorithms on the air interface. One of the 4G encryption algorithms is already quantum safe, but that dates back a while. There's new work needed to be done there. Uh, with respect to network slicing, one of the key features of 5G, uh, we're going to have to have uh, security there. We're going to have to have universal security uh, to ensure the integrity of each individual slice, and then each individual slice is going to have its own has to have its own unique security attribute. So there's a tremendous amount of work to be uh, done there. I think it's very important as we go through the 5G security story to bear in mind, you know, a lot of the security uh, uh, options and solutions that are already available to operators today, which they're not implementing. And for example, 
Uh, 3GBP has prescribed the, uh, the security gateway, which uh, provides for uh, encryption on the S1 and X2 interfaces and the termination of that encryption in the 3GP, in the 3GBP core. In Europe, quite a lot of operators have implemented that up until now, but outside of Europe, very few operators have. So, you know, there's all this new sexy 5G security stuff being talked about, but actually there's some basics that need to be implemented as well. Another one, for example, is SS7 security. That's causing a lot of concern at the moment. Again, the implementation's not there, and we're miles out before 5G. So let's not get overly excited about all the sexy 5G security stuff. There is unique stuff to be done. It's leading edge. But there's... It, very often in security, you find that it's the, you know, if, if we could just get some of the basics right, uh, we would eliminate 90% of the problems that we face. And in that, I'm even including things like the way people uh, reuse the same passwords. I'm talking about the need for multi-factor authentication. I'm talking about not posting on Facebook that you're going away on holiday for two weeks. And by the way, if you want to come and rob my house whilst I'm away on holiday, feel free. So, yes, there's a lot of unique and specific 5G security stuff to be done, but let's not forget some of the important basic building blocks without which all the clever stuff probably will come unstuck. Patrick, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.